Hey guys, it's Come for MC here again. Thanks for stopping by for another edition of our LBP Tutorials video series. Today we're going to be taking a look at player counters. We're going to do this in a way so that it's dynamic and we're going to be able to count accurately the number of players in a level even if players die or they leave or they join late. So this is going to be really handy. Now I have another controller turned on that we're going to use for testing over here. So if you can, you can just ignore that icon that's off to the side. We'll get to him later. Okay. So I'm going to start first by placing down a player sensor. Obviously we're sensing how many players in the, are in the level, so it would make sense to use a player sensor. And then I'm going to use a circuit board, microchip, and we're going to wire our player sensor right up to it. So we're going to be able to turn this microchip on and off. And then I'm going to place a battery right on here. So we're going to be able to turn this battery on and off because I'm going to turn its signal down to 25%. What we're going to do here is we're going to set up some addition, and if you notice, 25% is one-fourth of a full 100% signal strength, and that matches up nicely with uh, four possible players that we could have in a level. Okay, So I'm going to wire this battery to just a blank node out there, and then collapse my microchip, and you'll see that when I delete the node, I have a nice little wire outage there that I can use so I don't have to open this microchip anymore. Okay, I'm going to make four copies of this. And you'll see how we're going to work with this in a minute, but we need four copies for each of our four players. And then I'll tweak this second one to have the required number of players at two, the third one at three, and the fourth one will require four players. Okay. Now I'm going to select all of them and increase their maximum detection range. Because obviously players are not always right next to one another. And so I'll just set this to an arbitrarily large. You could set it up as high as 5,000. I just went up to 500. And then I'm going to set up an addition of these signals. So if you're not sure what I'm doing here to make this addition, be sure to check out our, my addition and subtraction tutorial here. And we're doing this by just repeatedly subtracting these signals from one, one another and then subtracting the result from 100. If you don't believe that the math works there, make sure you do check out the video there. So we'll wire up our first subtraction to our first microchip and we'll follow this little pattern that we're seeing here through our whole subtraction series. Okay, and then the result that we get, we subtract from 100 like I previously said. Okay, so this signal that's coming out of that last uh, directional combiner, directional splitter, excuse me. No, that's a combiner, yeah. So the signal that's going to come out of there is going to be a percentage out of 100. It's either going to be 25, um, 50, 75, or 100. And I'm going to use a sequencer here with four stripes, and that sequencer is set to positional if you saw me tweaking it. So we have one, two, three, four stripes for 25%, 50%, 75, and 100. And we're going to eventually use that to decipher our signal. Do so you notice when I drop in with just myself here, it's up to that first bar 25% of the way across because we've set up the addition to work accordingly. Okay. If I drop in with my second controller, you'll see that it goes up to 50%, which we're going to interpret as two players. I'm sure you can imagine that three players would be the third stripe, four players would be the fourth stripe, or 75 and 100% respectively. But we want to make this entire thing modular. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a... Oop, we're, no, we want to first set up a follower. So we want this thing to follow us around the level. Okay. So I've set my maximum speed on my follower here to 100%, acceleration to 100, minimum detection to zero. We want it to follow it right up on the player, and we'll set this maximum detection to an arbitrarily large value. I don't want this to follow a tag, because by default it follows a player. So you'll notice as I run around, it will follow me just like I want. And even if I die and respawn, as long as I haven't left that follower range, it will come back and snap back to the player. Okay. But I want this thing, like I said, to be modular, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to send this signal wirelessly to wherever I want it via this tag. I'm just leaving it as a default green tag. You could give it a label if you would want. And so what's happening now is that signal that I was, was sending to my sequencer is now being sent to this tag. Now it doesn't have any visual indicator of what the signal going through there is, but we have a way of deciphering it once we get it to its destination. Okay, so the way that I'm going to catch or decipher or whatever receive this signal is I'm going to have to set up a tag sensor. But first I'll show you what we're going to set up here. 
So I have a little bot, a little button there that when I grab it, it dispenses a companion cube. Woo, companion cube. But I'd hate for if there were more than one player that each player wouldn't get their own companion cube because that just wouldn't be fair or nice. So I'm going to set this up so it will emit the number of cubes that matches with the number of players in the level. To do that, I need to receive my signal that I'm sending from my tag. I just use a normal tag sensor. I'm going to set the range fairly large because we're not going to be sure which player it's going to be following around. So I'll set it to 150. Again, you can set that to as large as you would like. And then we go down to this output value signal strength. It's important that we tweak it to that, otherwise it'll just turn on as soon as this tag gets in within range of it. And then I'm going to move my sequencer over to this over here, and I struggle here. We're trying to delete that node so there's no wire running through, and I eventually figure out I can delete it from there. So now notice that there are no wires running between the two, and then I'm going to wire my tag sensor up to my sequencer, and we'll see if this works out. So now the tag, the, we have the signal being sent wirelessly here, and I'll open this up and we'll see if it works. I drop in and just like we would like it jumps to the first stripe there. If I use my second controller it'll jump to the second con second stripe. Looks like everything is working perfectly so awesome and good news. Okay, Now we want to use this signal in a way that we have pre that I have set up here and I'm going to do this with batteries. I'm going to I guess probe my signal with a couple of batteries. So I lay down my first battery is going to trigger when there's one player or more than one player. Second one when there's two players or more than two players. Third one when there is three players or four players and the fourth one only when there is exactly four players. Okay? And I'm going to set up a couple of conditionals through through AND gates here. So I want each of these to emit only when there's I hit the button and there's that number of players. So I'll wire up the first condition on all of my AND gates is hitting that button over there. That's going to be the bottom on all of these. And then the other condition will be how many players there are. So this will be one player in the level and it will trigger that first AND gate. Second player in the level will trigger this second AND gate. And notice I'm using nodes here just to keep my, my logic nice and tidy. I do this in the video so I don't lose track of which wire is which and so I can hope you guys can hopefully see it a little better and it also is a little visually pleasing for those of us who are mildly OCD like myself. Okay, So I've wired these all up successfully and then I just wire them up to the emitters there and I've set up nodes so that I can quickly wire this while the video is going on. Okay, So now everything has been set up. So just like before when I have one player I grab and I get one single cube. But let's say I have a second player in the level. They don't even have to be right next to me and if I grab this again, I will get two cubes, which is mighty handy. Okay, So just to see what's going on here, I have our sequencer, which is indicating that we have two players in the level. So the we're setting the conditions on our AND gate, on two of our AND gates to be true. And the other conditions will be satisfied as soon as I grab the button. So you notice two AND gates are firing, so two emitters are firing, and it works just like we've designed. Okay, and you can imagine that if there were three players, the third and fourth AND gates there would trigger and we'd get three and four of our companion cubes. And notice that I have triangles of dark matter up there. I just copied these over from an LBP1 level. Okay, now you don't have to use companion cubes or anything like that. It could be as simple as emitting the number of point bubbles. So you, you change the number of point bubbles in a level. Or it could be as simple as if you have a controlinator and you want four of them for e or one of them for each player, so a maximum of four for four players. Okay, so we're going to review what we've done here. We have this signal right here that I am sending wirelessly over to this other microchip, and I'm doing that through a tag and tag sensor pairing. Okay, and I had to make sure that I set my tag sensor to not closeness but to signal strength. Okay. And lastly, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I guess I didn't have anything else. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, this stuff is pretty cool stuff, and I'm glad that Mr. Supercomputer, one of my friends, had come up with it. So make sure you stop by his site, and actually this is it. So take care. Bye-bye.